Dear friends, welcome to my video. In this video, we'll see how to get the list of cache files, like cache basically, or uh, the files or directories of your Android app. So let's begin. Let's create a new app and say cache files and directories of app. These are things I'll leave it as it is and click finish and wait for the environment to load. It may take a while. Once the environment loads, I'll also start my emulator in parallel on the right hand side. And uh, first I will do my layout part. Okay. So in the layout, I'll not use text view. Probably I'll use something called list view to list out the cache. So it will be a long list, right? So it's better to have a list. Now I'll put a button probably. So okay, this list has taken up a so I'll do one. I'll first put a button. And then in the remaining place, I'll put the list. So, and I'll name this button as list the cache files. You can name this anything, give some constraints. Okay, I'll make it somewhere in, around the center. And then I'll bring the list view. Okay, and in list view, okay, my emulator is coming up. So, I'll just minimize this for the time being. Yeah, list view has been added here. And for list view also, I think I have to just give some constraints and an ID also because I'll be fetching it from my Android app, the Java code. So once done this, I'll go to my Java code and over here, first and foremost, I'll do one thing is I'll create a class variable for list view. List view and list view. Find me by ID r dot id dot list view perfect i'll also create a method for the button on click public white button list cache files view view yeah and i'll go back to the layout and assign this method as the on click attribute of this particular button so if I scroll down somewhere over here, I should get the on click attribute. Yeah. So perfect. So now I think in terms of layout, I'm done. I'll go back here and start the coding. Coding is pretty much simple. You have to use something called preference. Preference. But I think uh, uh, the preference right now I'm getting is from the Android or preference. Now this is not what I want. So if you notice. This is a, a deprecated version. So what I need is from the Android X office. So probably I'll go quickly to the Android developer page. And the one which I need is from the Android X library, which is this preference, Android X preference. And so to get that, what I can do is I can declare the dependencies in my um, uh, Gradle file. So this is a dependency which I need. So, well, uh, okay. So I need, I'm doing the coding for Java. So I just need the first part. So I'll just copy this part and go back to my Android Studio environment. I'll quickly go to my Gradle file and over here I'll assign it and click on sync now. It may take a while to sync. I'm not sure if it's syncing or not. Yeah, uh, it's syncing now. And if I come back here, then if I now do the preference again, and yeah, this time if you notice, it's giving me the correct one Android X preference. So just press Alt Enter. And it will give you the non deprecated one. So just include that preference, new preference, and context is of course this. Now to get the cache, we will use this preference. So I'll create a file uh, variable, new file, and in this I'll get this preference dot get. Uh, let me see if cache is there. No, it's not there. So you have to do first get context. Because cache will be with respect to the current uh, app, and then you use the cache directly, and then you can probably get the path. Of, and of course, in this, I'll do is I'll get path. Now, from this file, I'll do one thing I'll get the list of files. So, say for your files and file dot list files. Yeah, this first one. So this will list me the files because it may be uh, uh, an array, right? Lots of files could be there in this cache, so it will list me all the files. 
and over here probably what I can do over here I can check whether the length of these files is 0 or not so if this is 0 then it means there is no cache over here and probably I can do something is like closed and make those context is this and then probably I can give some kind of character sequence so no cache and then duration could be long and then show and of course return it you need not to post it however if there is a some cache then you should post it further and for that what I'll do is I'll first create a use something called a string builder new string builder and then in a iterate I will iterate through this variable one by one uh, because it will be multiple layers so let me see how I'll do it for few layers and new file file one files and if there is some files then what I'll do is I'll print it into this string builder dot append and probably I'll start it with a uh, okay first of all I'll give a new line and the first one would be a star and plus the file what so I'll do one thing is one I'll also make it two string just to be on the safer side yeah perfect now in this for loop itself what I'll do is I'll iterate again on this file one uh, variable so for that what I'll do is I'll just do one more time files probably safety number one and this time use the files one to get me the list of the files over here and then again I'll iterate so I'll do one thing I'll just copy paste or probably I'll type it in control c control v close and this file one I have to change to probably say for my file 2 and don't forget to change this also to file 2 and probably for a different notification I'll do one thing I'll change it to some different notification that is a second layer uh, files similarly we can do one more time probably third layer so for that what you can do is we can again copy paste this control C complete part here control V the only thing we have to change is to this to file 2 so we can keep doing it for the nth layer I don't know but I'll do it just for two layers right now and that's all so this will be file 3 and here yeah, I'll probably add plus 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 so that's all so once my string builder assuming everything is done over here so at the end what I'll do is I'll get a adapter list adapter to show it on the uh, list adapter yeah and new array adapter and this is your type of a string and what are the objects which I need is I need probably the context which is in SOT dot this and Android dot r dot layout so here I am just defining the uh, layout on which it should iterate like it should stall or show the behavior so I'll use a simple list one and then probably we can use our string builder over here perfect so once I have it then I can do is set adapter list u dot set adapter and here I can give this list adapter as an input that's all I guess let me quickly run this app I won't be surprised if it says no cache because right now we have our app hasn't done anything so there won't be any cache is what I'm suspecting so for that also I'll do something uh, but first let it let me app come up and see I'll demonstrate both first let's see if by default is any cache or not Yeah, so app has come up and let me no cache if you notice here it shows down below no cache that is what I was even suspecting so wait what I'll do for uh, bringing the cache is probably very quickly uh, let me put a web view okay and load something because web view is generally uh, it uh, uh, requires cache so I'll include the permission of internet it's just a declaration the manifest file and the layout what I'll do is uh, I'll quickly uh, probably minimize this to certain extent and bring a square root down bottom most I'll give it some more space because I'll be putting a web view somewhere in between just to show uh, putting a web view brings it should bring a cache 
far so i'm just bringing a value somewhere around the middle okay perfect and i'll give the constraints required for a review and in this review i'll go to the java code and over here private review review no 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 sorry so review and here find me by id r dot id dot review perfect now what i will also do if in case say for example uh, this is length is 0 then i will load the review load url and over here i will load my website control see my website over here and see what it happens so let me run it again so if it's uh, not uh, if cache is created then my url will not get loaded unnecessarily but i think for the first time i'm expecting it to get loaded so let me see so i have rerun the code perfect so if you notice this time some cache come came up uh, because the moment i added web view and uh, okay so i think you don't have to load it even so it is just added and that's more than sufficient so i don't think i need this part of the code over here and uh, probably what we can do over here itself is first and foremost we can set the visibility of the web view as a zero yeah in zero yeah okay so let me re and so this white part will go off i don't know if it's visible on the video but yeah there was a white part of the web view which was capturing it so it's gone now and if you see no my all the uh, cache is coming up over here so if i can zoom it a bit over here to show you the files which is coming up over here is basically at the top level so this is at the top level which is the web view which we added and then inside the web view one level down is uh, again a web view and there are like two three layers of uh, uh, cache over here available my focus is not on view of course my focus is on how to retrieve the cache directly which is of course using this particular one line command and then you can uh, pull it one by one using this kind of iteration uh, up to whatever level you want if you want just top level then first level is it should be sufficient to iterate and then you can show it either on list view or on uh, uh, text view or whatever you prefer so that's all i wanted to show you in this video i hope this video is useful to you if you have any questions or suggestion then please put it in the comment section below and if you like this video then please subscribe to my channel thank you and